Father, we're longing for We are your children born from above We believe you're coming back for us So Jesus, while we wait for you Lord, we will tell the world the truth That you came to save Some say that you're never coming back Jesus, we know better than that Holy Spirit will be with us till the end Sticking closer than a brother or a friend So Jesus, while we wait for you Lord, we will tell the world And it's not too late to believe in your grace Jesus, while we wait for you Lord, we will tell the world the truth That you came to say And it's not too late to Welcome, LHB family, to this year's 2022 LHB Bible Prophecy Conference. We are so glad that you guys are able to join us, and I hope you guys enjoy all of the wonderful speakers that will be here and the different topics that will be covered. And I also hope that you uh, uh, enjoyed the intro music uh, by Prentice Miller, uh, that's um, the husband of one of our uh, dear ministers here on LHB, Addie Miller. And uh, you could uh, check out his music in the link below. Um, so, okay, today I'll be talking about, and the topic that was given to me, given to me uh, the world Christ ushers in and the inheritance of the saints. The world Christ ushers in and the inheritance of the saints. Well, it's no uh, big secret that today, in this day and age, what we're living in, we see a lot of death and destruction, disease and hardships and um, trouble. You know, we go through a lot of trouble and we die very easily, right? We're weak in this present day and age, okay? And of course, we all know that's because of the fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve. You know, you turn on the news, and the news is about 99% bad news <laughs> when you turn it on. You get that rare percentage of good news and uh, that comes out. But on a regular basis, it's uh, basically bad news that you hear every day. And, you know, of course, now with things heating up with uh, Ukraine and Russia and all of that, and uh, people's fears are on World War Three. you know, the nuclear, you know, option. What's going to happen? You know, what if they launch a nuke and all of this? Wars and rumors of wars, like the Bible says, right? But there's an age to come that's uh, going to take over this current age, and it's going to be drastically different. 
And what do I mean by that? Well, at the end of the tribulation, a few things happen. Number one, Jesus Christ comes. He takes uh, the beast and the false prophet, the Antichrist, false prophet, and cast them alive into the lake of fire. They don't even go to the great white throne judgment. They go straight to the lake of fire. Then he takes uh, Satan, the dragon, and he binds them in the bottomless pit or the abyss. Now, this is not, this is a separate area. This is not the lake of fire. And he will be released 1,000 years later. And that's for a good reason. We're going to see that during this topic. Now, after that, there's a 75-day gap before the millennium actually starts. Now, the word millennium uh, means 1,000 years. Milli for 1,000 and Adam means years. So we'll put them together, you have 1,000 years. And you find that in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And it says this, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay? Now, at the second coming, after the Antichrist, false prophet, and the dragon are all cast away, there will be a 75-day period before the millennium actually begins. Now, where do we find that? We find that in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. It says this, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, that's what the Antichrist does in the temple during the tribulation, there shall be 1,290 days, right? That's three and a half years. But then it says, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to 1,305 and 30 days, or 1,335 days. Now, where is that extra 75 days? So, what's going on? Okay. So, we have the sheep and the goat judgments that need to take place when Christ returns. Now, the sheep are those who were saved during the tribulation period that, um, you know, helped the Jewish believers out, that hid them from Antichrist and his, and his militia, that, you know, uh, fed them, clothed them, nursed them to health when they were sick, as outlined in the sheep and goat judgments, you know. When they say, Lord, Lord, when have we seen you? When have we visited you in jail? When have we done this and that? And Jesus says, well, if you've done this to the least of my brethren, speaking of his earthly brethren, the Jews, you have done it unto me. And this is the sheep that will go in to the millennium. That's why it says again in Daniel chapter 12, verse 12, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,335 days. That's the end of that 75 day mark because they get to go in. Now the goats, on the other hand, and those are the ones that were not saved during the tribulation period. Those are the ones that somehow made it through uh, the, the tribulation. Maybe they didn't take the mark of Antichrist, but at the same time, they didn't accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they didn't help the Jews in any kind of way when they were being persecuted by Antichrist and hunted. And these are the ones that Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. So these are the ones that will be at that moment cast into the temporary hell, which we call Hades, where the rich man still is, by the way, and they will be there for 1,000 years until the end of the millennium when they will in turn be released to stand before the great white throne judgment and then judge for each and every single one of their sins that you've ever committed, thought, or said, okay? And then they'll be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophets still are. Okay. So now, after the 75 days, the glorious millennial reign of Jesus Christ begins on planet Earth. All the things that, you, that hinder us today, all the things that make us weak today, all the things that make us sick today, right, will be done away with. There will be no more uh, uh, labor pains in childbirth. There will be no more diseases or sicknesses. 
Yes, people in their natural bodies will still age, but they will age very slowly. Okay, it'll be so slow that at 100 years of age, you will look like a baby. You'll still be like you're a baby, okay? This will be a time of great renewal for planet Earth. There'll be no more deserts, no more wastelands or waste places. Every tree will have fruit. Green will be greener, blues will be bluer. The mountains will flow with milk and honey. Everywhere you look, you'll see smiling faces of believers enjoying the Lord. You'll have people that will be genuinely happy to see you no matter where you go. Talk about a drastically different place. You know, for the first seven years into the millennium, uh, we will be melting our weaponry into plowshares, farming tools, and instruments to take care of planet Earth. And it will be transformed into a paradise. Right now, we can't say that this world is a paradise. We can't say that at all. There's too much sin, too much darkness, and too much evil here. But one of the things that will take place in the millennium is that we'll have uh, David, King David, as prince over Israel. Okay? Under the rulership of Jesus, of course. It says this in Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, you know, guys, what a blessing to see the future that's coming to the saints. What a blessing. Initially, when the millennium starts, only believers will inhabit this marvelous new world with King Jesus reigning from the heavenly city and King David from Jerusalem. And of course, the 12 apostles, they too will rule over the 12 tribes of Israel. And all of us saints, glorified saints, will have some position of authority and rulership as well. But as those in natural bodies that come into the millennium begin to marry and have babies and repopulate the millennium, those babies in turn must also make a decision to have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They must decide that they, they need a Savior and that Savior is Jesus Christ, just like their parents did. And sadly, what we're going to start to see transpire is children being born that will reject Christ, even in the millennium. And they will go on uh, to, you know, secretly harbor hatred for, for Jesus in their heart, all while worshiping him with their lips, as if they could hide anything from the Lord, right? They will have until the age of 100 to make that decision for Christ. And after the age of 100, they will either die or be eternally doomed to the lake of fire, meaning there will be no more hope of salvation for them. And where do I get that? It says in Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 20, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old. But the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. Did you get that? The ch you'll be considered a child if you die at 100 years old. And the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. 
The only people that are going to die during the millennium are those who are sinners, those who are lost, okay? And the Lord, in his graciousness, gives a person 100 years to come to that decision during this millennial reign. I mean, think about it. You'll have Jesus on the throne for all to see. You'll have the glory that shall be shining from the heavenly Jerusalem all across the world, all across the globe. You'll have uh, uh, peace with animal life and with each other. And yet, people will still reject the Lord as time goes on. And, you know, for a long time, I wondered about this verse here uh, in Revelation. We'll go back to it. All right, let's read Revelation 20 again. We'll start in verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And that goes that millennium. And verse 7 says something interesting. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, guys, for a long time, I didn't understand this. Like, Lord, why in the world would you let Satan out at the end of the millennium after you get him locked up? Why not just keep him locked up? Why not just lock him away forever? Well, the Lord always has a purpose, right? Always has a reason. You see, during the millennium, Satan will be locked away, and so will his fallen angels with him. There'll be no one to tempt mankind to sin. So when these children grow up in the millennium and begin to turn away from the Lord, they cannot point the finger at Satan, a bad environment, a troubled childhood, or nothing. They will have to point to their own wicked human heart. So Satan is released as a final condemnation on the human race to show that the problem of sin was always in the wicked human heart. We can never say, the devil made me do it. All the devil could do is tempt us from the outside. And we give him permission to do that by our will, okay? So we can't blame the devil. And in, during this time, God will show that because there will be, there will be no fig leaf that anyone could hide behind during this time. Satan will be released, and immediately when he's released, he has a ready standing army ready to attack the saints at Jerusalem. But of course, we just read how that ends. Fire comes down from God and devours them, and he is cast alive into the lake of fire where the beasts and the false prophets still are. So we, you know, it's not even a battle, it's not even a skirmish. God ends it just as fast as it begins. But the point is, all those people that were born during the millennium, and believe me, there will be billions of people born during this 1,000 years. If you, I'm, I'm telling you, if you remove away uh, the child, uh, uh, you know, um, birth defects and all of that, you have perfect births 100% of the time, or, you get, or someone conceives every single time they have relations with their spouse. Think about the abundance of life that will be produced during this time with no hindrance from death and the effects of death and disease and all of that. Life will be abundant, and there will be multitudes, unfortunately, by the end of the millennium, that will join Satan and his rebellion, right? Now, one of the awesome things about the millennium that I, I personally can't wait to, to see is the, the, the fact that the Lord will answer our prayer before we finish asking. It says here, in uh, um, Isaiah 65, verse 24, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. 
and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Before they call, I will answer. Can you imagine thinking of something to ask the Lord, and the answer is already there before you can even finish that thought? You, you talk about an amazing uh, time. You know, can you imagine, uh, you know, thinking, wow, I wish I had this particular fruit to eat. And before you even finish that, a tree right next to you just produces that fruit for you to eat. Think about that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? The Lord already has this in mind for us. You know, we see on this side of the millennium, we see nothing but death. We see the, the, the ravages of sin and the fall. But during this time, you will see the glory of the Lord. You will see the abundance that he gives to his children. And you'll see the drastic difference between this world and the, the next world to come. Right? This current world, first of the millennium, drastic difference, night and day, oil and water, black and white. You can't get any more different and opposite than the, the millennium will be compared to today. You know, every time I hear like a, a siren go by on the street or either an ambulance or a police vehicle, you know, I often think about the millennium, you know, that, you know, there's going to be a lot of jobs that won't be needed anymore. Um, and I believe a lot of that will be police and uh, ambulance and uh, hospitals and things of that uh, sort, because you will need it during that time. The curse will be removed. Death will be drastically reined in and people will age a lot slower. Like uh, back in uh, Adam and Eve's day and Noah's day where they lived 900 plus years. And th in this case, believers, even though they, they'll get older uh, in their natural bodies, they'll still live the entire millennium, the, the entire 1,000 year period. And um, those in glorified bodies obviously won't age at all past their prime. They'll be in their prime forever. And uh, I, I can't wait for that, you know. But, you know, guys, look. The millennium will be a time of beautifulness, of peace, of glory, where Israel will finally receive the rewards that God and the promises that God promised to them through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And through them, they will fill the entire world with fruit. Imagine having peace with what we call wild animals today. You know, I often imagine you know, having a lion as a pet or soaring the skies with an eagle by my side or petting a wolf that just happens to walk by your front door. Or how about an alligator swimming with an alligator in, 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 the, in, the, in the lakes and streams? You know, it says that a child would play in the den of vipers without being harmed. There'll be no kidnapping or harm coming to children. None of that. Everything will be obedient to Christ. The, the laws of nature will conform to Christ. And the animal kingdom will be at peace with humanity once again. But the, the Lord does allow free will. And during that time, we will see, unfortunately, again, many People in their natural bodies that are born during this time re rebel against the Lord. And then we finally come to the end of the thousand years when the, the temporary hell that has the spirits and souls of human beings from ages past, they will be resurrected and given new bodies as well, bodies fit for condemnation. And they will stand before the great white throne judgment the God of all eternity. And they will give an account at that moment. They will answer for every sin they've ever committed, said, thought, done. Every blasphemy they've uttered against the Lord. Every time they've cursed him or, or said his name in vain. Or martyred or hurt one of his children. They will answer. This will be the moment they dread because they are going to be taken out of hell, the temporary holding spot, reunited with their body and cast alive into the lake of fire, their permanent home. Think of the hell, Hades, as the local jail. 
When someone gets arrested, they go to the local jail. They come out of that local jail, they stand before the judge. The judge formally sentences them to the big house, the penitentiary, the permanent jail. Well, Hades, where people go today when they die without Christ, is the temporary holding spot where the rich man still is and many others. From the days of Noah all the way to the great white throne judgment, that's where they are. At the end of the 1,000 year period, after Satan is cast alive into the lake of fire, the great white throne will uh, be set up and the people that were in hell, the Hades, will be released. And again, their sins will be read aloud to them and they will be formally sentenced to the lake of fire. If you're at the great white throne judgment, you're not going to have a second chance. This is not for heaven. This is only so you know that there's a just and righteous God that is judging you fairly. Okay? And that's what's going to happen. But I pray, though, brethren, and those watching, if you don't know the Lord, to please turn to the Lord today. The Lord has a glorious future for all of his children. The Lord wants all men to be saved. He says that in his word. The word of God says, all that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Be part of the cloud of witnesses of the saints. Be part of this new age that is to come, the real new age. Not this occult new age that they preach down here today. The real new age, the new age of Jesus Christ the millennial reign of the Lord, the age to come. That's the real new age that you want to be a part of. And if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, that's a future that's guaranteed for you. And if you do it on this side of the rapture, you'll get a glorified body to boot. You know, this whole body here, you know, it's dying every day. You wear glasses, got hearing aids, whatever, got headaches, you know, whatever. Body aches, pains, diseases, sicknesses. We're a mess in this body, right? But there's, day, there's a day coming when the Lord will shout from the heavens to come up here and his bride, his church, will be called up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and be glorified in an instant. And at that moment, we will be eternally in our forever bodies. And this is what we want for all of you that are listening. Put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ today. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. Call upon Him in truth. Believe that He died for your sins, bore the Father's wrath for those sins, was buried, and on the third day rose again in justification for you and I. Believe that according to the Scriptures, and you will be saved. You don't have to recite a prayer or read off a, you know, a piece of paper or whatever. Ask the Lord from your heart to save you in your own words. And he will. Just come as you are without excuse. Don't justify your sins. Say, Lord, I am a filthy sinner deserving of your wrath and your judgment. Please forgive me and save me. And he will. And then your future will be set in heaven forever. And the fellowship that you will enjoy for eternity. But if you reject the Lord, your future home is the lake of fire. If you follow Satan, you will get Satan's reward. And we don't want that for any one of you. Well, my friends, thank you for watching this part of the conference. Uh, we have other speakers that are coming up, and we pray that you, um, you know, get something out of this whole conference. Uh, we love you guys. And um, for the brethren, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha, and God bless.